Guys, I saw that the video got a lot of love. The difference between the Bulldog and the Bully, AKA the Terrier. Now, objectively, you don't want to breed too close to the Terrier. You don't want to breed too close to the Bulldog. You can see the evident difference, sir. No, 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 stay there, mama. You're doing good. Look at her face. She looks more Terrier, right? Maya. Look at Maya, boy. She won't get up there. Maya. Look at the Bulldog. Hey, 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 get down. Look at her. Look at that. See the Bulldog? See the sad look? Bless her heart. You can see the evident difference, right? So here's the thing. Get out, mama. We breed for health. I'm not saying a bulldog's not healthy, but you guys got to do a lot more tests. In the American Bully, you got two styles. You know that there are bullies that look like this right here. And you know that there are bullies that look more like a bulldog. That's the truth as well. Your challenge is making sure that you build a program about around what you like, what you need. They say breed to the standard, but the standards change quite a few times. Some people say, well, it's okay. It's a new breed. Some breeds have been established as early as seven years, seven generations. This breed's been around for over 20 years per se. 20 years and nobody still knows what it looks like. But we do know the ones that look the most like what they would identify as the breed are the ones that have heavy bulldog influence, short snout, drop cheeks, all that stuff. And I'll actually write on paper the difference in all of the snouts at another time. I'll write down the traits, the traits that I'm looking for, the traits that I like, the traits that matter to me. When you are trying to create an American bully or build your program out, make sure that you have a clear idea of what you want to identify with. In the middle of this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for those people that you know need help. These pups are going to be more active than these pups. I solved her problem by inviting more life, aka better breathing, better health, better activity, a better mind. Unfortunately, the, the dogs often take traits on from the mother Athletically, Jamarcus has a female. He could tell you that Joker is not that bright. <laughs> Why are you crushing him? That Joker is not that bright. And that's the truth. Hunter's dog Flex. This is the mother. Not that bright. Every one of her kids. <laughs> Super intelligent. And that's what I was betting on every time. Intelligence. So when you guys breed, build a pedigree or you like a good pedigree based on what? How it looks, I like what it does. So I double stack confidence. She's their grandmother. Confident, intelligent. Ego's their daddy. That's her son. Guess what? Confident, intelligent, driven. Two drive, I got plus drive, plus confident, plus focus, plus will, <laughs> plus everything that I'm looking for while continuing to add features that are based around the things that we want. See what I'm saying? So where you guys put a pedigree based on what it looks like, I wanna know what it feel like. And I don't mean because I put my hand, I wanna know like, yo, that dog's gonna have my back. I trust that dog, I love, that's the dog I'm looking for. I love intelligence, people. I love confidence. I love confidence. I need a dog to be confident. Maya's not that confident, she's super timid. If you know anything about the Bulldogs, what ends up happening? Bulldog is submissive. Chris Moore said that in one of the videos I shot while I was in Virginia. It's a submissive breed. So you can't ask a dog to run, hop, jump, and skip. You can, but it's not that, not that uh, safe. If you have an undershot draw, you literally put strain on the neck. And the stress on the neck, to say the least, <sighs> Let's do this. I mean, we on YouTube, so we can go a little bit longer. Hey, I can never find nothing, people. Ah. <laughs> I knew it was over here somewhere. Let's take a look at this. Oh, man. And for those, this is your gym, Structure and Action. Now this, I don't know why y'all keep asking me again about the books, when these things don't really matter to you. It don't matter because y'all not trying to breed better dogs. Y'all like the way things are. And I like the way things are going to be, which is why we have so much work to do. So when we talk about, <coughs> we're gonna get the jaws here. Let's start with the jaw. Let's see, where's the undershot? Narrow lens, canines, anterior, posterior, even level bite, ride mouth. Oh, you definitely don't wear ride. His ride mouth is something that's very common in the bulldog as well. Overshot, undershot. So, when you look at an undershot draw, I'm gonna read this to you. The bottom incisors are on the outside of the upper incisors. See? 
Do it like that. The minute you do this, you feel the strain on your neck here. Problem is, you also get strain here. Huh. This bite is undershot. This bite is considered normal and breeds with short head formations, brachiocephalic, aka your bulldogs, such as Boxer Bulldog, Brussels, Griffin, Pekingese, Shih Tzu, French Bulldog, and Doggo de Bordo. It's allowed in the Bull Mastiff, and it goes down the line of just like uh, uh, of all the breeds. An undershot bite was called for to create a certain appearance of head and jaw that the authors of these original standards thought important in all in all other breeds it is classified as a fault although it is allowed many breeds in many breeds it is a non-functional bite and would not be found in the wild you know how i passed the pauses for a second Y'all hear me now? This bite would not be found in the wild and Chris Moore also did a good job of explaining that Mother Nature wants to correct itself because survival of the fittest is, is, is one of the, only the strong survive. You cannot survive if you cannot defend yourself. And what way does a dog protect clean itself? Objectively through its teeth, through its, paw, through its, through its mouth. And that's not to say the bulldog can't do work. That's not to say the American bulldog can't do bite work, can't be trained. Risk. Many veterinarians who work with this performance dog believe that when the jaw is undershot, the neck is constantly held in an unnatural position with a reverse curve. Jut out your lower jaw and note how your head tilts back and your neck changes its curve. And if you do that, you feel a strain here and you feel a strain here. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to create better bulldogs. I don't want to breed to no bulldog. My job is not to create or, or build around the bulldog. I have no interest in a dog that cannot work or will not have a crazy quality life. Maya snores. Maya has breathing problems. Maya has potentially a long, elongated soft palate. She struggles at times. She overheats quick. I don't want those problems. But I understand the interest and the look. So what do you do? You combine the two. And what do you get? We'll see. <laughs> Oh Lord, I know that this is what happens to a dog with an undershot bite. Such compensations make jumping much more difficult. Imagine jumping with your head tilted upwards. <laughs> if the dog is asked to jump with something in its mouth, a retrieve, it says e.g. a retrieve, it's literally written that way. I hate when books are not written properly. Over a, a retrieve over the high jump in open obedience, the dog must reverse the curve of his neck and even further in order to keep hold of the object. So the dog naturally has a drop jaw, undershot jaw. It holds things and it can't hardly breathe. It's got a strain on his neck. It's asked to jump. It's got to overextend his neck when jumping, which also puts strain when landing. I jumped over a fence that was about six foot a while ago and I hadn't been training and no exercise. And uh, I tell you, when I hit the ground the next day, I was in pain. My bones were shook. <laughs> My bones was hurting, bro. I was like, Ooh, what did I do? I just got jump over that fence. That's crazy. Agility and obedience uh, dogs with undershot jaws increase stress on their lower backs when they hold their heads and the necks at elevated angles. Hunting and retrieving dogs with undershot jaws increase stress on their necks and lower backs when they carry a heavy bird or dumbbell. They also have more difficulty picking up such objects. These dogs can develop back pain and if they are straight in the shoulders, and we talked about that, or we talk about that again, the problem can be exacerbated. An undershot jaw costs dogs their natural tool for scratching, itching, pulling things out of their coats, feet, nibbling, which is one of the dog's communication tools within his pack. You see why you got to know what to ask your breeders. Hey, are you breeding close to the bulldog or are you breeding close to the terrier? I like some bulldog components with the terrier and I like a good balance. Because we have the balance, I love and come from the pit bull space. I'm always going to breed to that dog. And we'll add some of the features, but for the most part, Zara looks great. She's a great looking dog. She's everything that I need and everything that I want. And I can build and add anything to her because if a dog lacks confidence and intelligence, I can't do anything with them anyway. I do not have dogs to look at, to be clear. Now we've got some beautiful pups here and we're gonna to continue to produce some beautiful pups. But one thing we have to do is watch the dogs grow up. We have to take our time. We wanna pace ourselves and we wanna get it right more than we get it wrong. And we're not gonna always get it right, but we are gonna do the work. So I repeat for those that are saying, I got a couple questions. What does my dog look like? Study the terrier, study the bulldog. 
when you start seeing drop jaw, a lot of wrinkles, undershot jaw, uh, droop, uh, uh, super droop here, not tight skin, not tight cheeks. You're getting more into your bulldog traits and that's evident because a fish stinks from his head and we identify everything based on its face. If I had no face, you would then identify me as a color. Oh, he's African American or oh, he's black. If I had no facial expression and it was like nothing on my face was just one of those mask things. I mean, I could be green if I walk around with a green hood on all the time. We'll talk more about this at another time, people. Like, subscribe, share. I thank you for watching. You want to know what you're getting, know what you're getting into. I'm, you keep asking about books. There's no definitive study on the American bully when they're still asking, adding things to it. I told you before, the bully's not going anywhere, but it ain't going nowhere. There's a ceiling for it. Some of you UK people and the, the people overseas, you guys are just getting into it. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Because it is one of the most confusing breeds I've ever come in contact with. And I've studied dog breeds for quite some time. Fast, I'm fascinated by them. Stay tuned. Take care of your dogs. And always, thank you for watching.